Hello, and thank you for tuning in to The Math Guy. Today we'll be looking at amortization and sinking funds. Our first problem for today reads, a sum of $50,000 is to be repaid over a five-year period through equal payments made at the end of each year. If an interest rate of 8% per year is charged on the unpaid balance and interest calculations are made at the end of each year, determine the size of each installment so that the, lo so that the loan, the principal plus interest charges, is amortized at the end of five years. The first thing we're doing this problem is to figure out what it means to amortize something. Usually if you're amortizing something, you're paying it off in monthly installments or yearly installments. You're mainly taking and making a bunch of payments to get rid of a debt that you might have. So if it's a car loan, if it's a mortgage, if it's a homeowner's loan, whatever, as long as you're making payments of the same size over and over and over to get rid of it, it's called to be amortized. So in this case, instead of looking at an annuity, we're looking at amortization, where we're trying to figure out how much the payments are going to be. To do this, we have to use a formula that looks like the following. R, which is our monthly payment, or our yearly payment, it's known as the periodic payment. So that's what we're finding with this formula, because we have R equals. Up here in the top, we have a big fraction. We have the principal times the quantity of lowercase r, which is our rate, just like before. We have a new variable here. We have our rate divided by n, where n is the number of periods. So if we're making monthly payments, n will be 12. If we're making quarterly payments, n will be 4. If we're making payments once per year, n will be 1. Okay, So this is the top of our formula. The bottom is a little bit more tricky. So there's more stuff in the bottom. We have 1 minus 1 plus. Don't get this confused because some people go through and do 1 minus 1. That's 0. There's parentheses here. Make sure you follow the order of operations. 1 plus r over n, which is the same r over n as we have up in the top, all to the negative n times t power. Okay? t, this is where our value of time comes in. We saw time before. We know t always represents time. Over here we have a list of all of our variables. The only one I don't have listed is p, which is our principal, which is also the amount borrowed. Okay. So we have all this information gets plugged into this formula. So what we have to do is go through and find out all of this information so we can plug it in. Okay, so the first thing we have to do, we'll start going through and just figuring out what information we have. So if we look, we know that we have a sum of $50,000. We know that our value of capital P, which is the amount that we borrowed, is $50,000. Okay, it says it's going to be repaid over a five year period. Five years is the number of years that for it, T is five. Through equal payments made at the end of each year. That introduces our value of lowercase n, which is one. We're making one payment per year, so n equals one. Now the only other piece of information we need to solve this problem and actually use the formula is our value of R. If you remember, R is our interest rate. This is our percentage per year. So in this case, it says we're being charged an interest rate of 8% per year, which means that R equals 8%, which is also 0 0.08 as a decimal. Like I said before, I always turn my things into a decimal. It's not as hard to get it lost in the information and make sure the calculations are done correctly. Now, the other thing we have to do is start filling all of this information into our formula. So we saw the formula previously, so I'm just going to start filling everything in. We know that R equals our value of P, capital P, so we have $50,000 in our numerator, being multiplied by our value of R over lowercase n. So we have 0 0.08 over 1. So that's our numerator of this entire formula. The denominator is simply 1 minus parentheses 1 plus 0 0.08 over 1 raised to the negative 
n times t power. Well, n is 1, t is 5. So we have everything simplified and entered into our formula. The next thing is start going down, going through the problem and starting breaking everything down. So we just start taking it in pieces. For these problems, the best way to do it is just to take it piece by piece. Don't try to do too much at once or you might lose some information along the way. So the first thing we want to do is get rid of these fractions. This is 0 0.08 over 1. We know anything divided by 1 is itself. So in the numerator, we have 50,000 times 0 0.08. 0 0.08 divided by 1 is 0 0.08. We also see it's down here as well, which is really easy to work with. We have 1 minus the quantity of 1 plus 0 0.08 over 1. Well, 0 0.08 over 1 is 0 0.08. 1 plus 0 0.08 is 1.08. This is raised to the negative 1 times 5 power. Well, 1 times 5 is 5, so it's raised to the negative 5 power. So we have this. This is our next step. We have 50,000 times 0 0.08 divided by the entire quantity of 1 minus the quantity of 1.08 to the negative 5 power. The next thing we have to do, we're going to start doing some of the multiplication, some of our simple applications. So R equals 50,000 times 0 0.08 just so happens to be 4,000. This is divided by 1 minus the quantity of 1.08 to the negative 5 power. So 1.08 to the negative 5 power breaks down to give me 0 0.6806. At this point, I like to have a couple extra decimal points. It gives me a more definite answer in the end. So we have to go that through, break some more stuff down. The 40,000, we're going to leave it exactly as it is. This is divided by 1 minus 0.6806. So we have 4,000 divided by 0.3194. If we take our calculator to 4,000 4, divided by 0.3194, we get an answer of $12,523.48. So if we want to take this $50,000 loan, repay it in five years at 8% interest and make one payment per year, we would have to pay off $12,523.48 per month to get that payment. Our second problem for the day reads, the Germain family have deci decided that after making a down payment, they could afford at most $1,000 for a monthly payment. The bank charges interest at a rate of 9.6% per year on the unpaid balance with interest computations made at the end of each month. If the loan is to be amortized in equal monthly installments over the next 30 years, what is the maximum amount that the Germain family could borrow from the bank? This problem is going to be very similar to the last problem we did. The only difference is, instead of finding R, we're now finding P. If we look at the problem, we know what the monthly payment is going to be. We know the monthly payment is going to be $1,000. So capital R is $1,000. We also know that it's a monthly payment, so that for, therefore that means that n is 12. Two birds with one stone there. We know it's going to be over 30 years, so t equals 30. And our interest rate is 9.6%. So like lowercase r is 9.6%, which is 0 0.096. From here, we just want to go through and start plugging information into our formula and breaking it down to find out what capital P is. So we fill all this information in. We have capital R in our original formula, which tells us 1,000 equals capital P, which we don't know, times the quantity of lowercase r over n. So we have 0 0.096 over 12. That's our numerator of the fraction. On our denominator, we have 1 minus the quantity of 1 plus 0 0.096 over 12. This is then raised to the negative n times t power, which is 12 times 30. We can go through and start breaking these individual pieces down. If you look, we have 2 0 0.096 divided by 12. Which if we do this math, 0 0.096 divided by 12, 
gives us 0 0.008. So anytime we have to do anything with 0 0.096 over 12, we can just use 0 0.008 instead. So we can break all this down. This turns into 1,000 equals P, capital P, times 0 0.096 over 12, which we found was 0 0.008. This is all divided by 1 plus the quantity of 1 plus 0 0.008. So we have 1.008. Let me go back here real quick. That should be a minus. Negative 12 times 30 is negative 360. So we can go through now. We have this. It's a little bit simpler, a little bit easier to work with. We'll use a different color for our next line. We can rewrite this as 1,000 equals, well, the P times 0 0.008. We can't do much with that yet, so we'll just let that go. This is all over 1 minus 1.008 raised to the negative 360th power. we got to do that exponent first. So in our calculator, we take 1.008, raise it to the negative 360th power. We get 0 0.0568. From here we have some subtraction due. We do the 1 minus 0 0.00568. We have P 0 0.008 on top. We do the subtraction, we get 0 0.9432. Our last step here, we want to go through, we want to multiply both sides by our denominator. When we do this multiplication, we have 943.2 equals P times 0 0.008. We divide this side by 0 0.008. And we get an answer that P equals $117,900. That's the maximum amount that the Germain family can borrow if they can afford $1,000 for monthly payments. Our last problem for today is a sinking fund problem, which reads as follows. The proprietor of Carson Hardware has decided to set up a sinking fund for the purpose of purchasing a set of computers in two years' time. It is expected to cost $30,000 for the computers and software that needs to be purchased. If the fund earns 10% interest per year compounded quarterly, determine the size of each quarterly installment the proprietor should make into the fund. Sinking funds are usually used by companies to let's say they want to save up money for computers in this case but they're not planning to buy them right now they're planning to buy them in the future in this case two years from now they set up this fund where they're going to put money into a bank account pretty much they get the interest on this which pretty much makes it so instead of them maybe paying thirty thousand dollars for the computer they might only spend i don't know twenty seven thousand dollars instead of thirty thousand dollars so that is how companies sometimes use banks to actually benefit them. Okay, now it's not just a way to hold your money, they're using them to actually get some extra interest for the banks using this, this setup. This formula can also be used in the case if you're going to say, I want to save up $1 million for when, I, for when I retire, how much must I put away each month? This formula works the same way for that problem too. This formula is a little different than the amortization formula. If we look at the formula, it starts out the same. Capital R, which is our monthly payments, equals S. S is the amount that we want to save. So if you think of it this way, S, save, they both have an S in them, works out. Capital S times lowercase r for lowercase n, all over the quantity of 1 plus r over n, raised to the n times t power, all minus 1. They look similar, the formulas are different. So make sure you don't use the wrong formula for the, for the problem. Okay. So pay attention to what you have to do with the formula. If we go through and start pulling out the information that we need, we see that they're, they're planning to save up $30,000. Save, capital S, 30000 we have an interest rate of 10%, so lowercase r equals 10%, which is the same as 0 0.10. Here it says compounded quarterly, so we're making quarterly payments into this fund. 
quarterly means four, so lowercase n is four. And they're planning to do this in two years' time. Okay? Two years' time means t equals two. So we have all the information we have in our problem. We have all the information we need for the formula. We can go through and start building everything into this formula. Capital R equals our capital S, which is 30,000, times our quantity of lowercase r over n. So we have 0 0.10 over 4. This is all over 1 plus 0 0.10 over 4 raised to the n times t power. Well, n is 4, t is 2. Let me subtract 1 from all of this. Just like the last problem, we want to go through and start breaking all the pieces down. We have a 0 0.10 over 4. We can do this division, we get 0 0.025. So anytime we see 0 0.10 over 4, we can fill in 0 0.025 instead. So we have 30,000 times 0 0.025. This is all over 1 plus 0 0.025, which is 1.025. This is raised to the 4 times 2 power. 4 times 2 is 8. And then we subtract 1. Our next step we go through, we use a different color for this. We want to start simplifying even more. So we take 30,000 and multiply by 0 0.025. We do this multiplication, we get 750 over 1.025 to the eighth power. We do that, that simplification, we get 1.2184 minus one. From here, we have to go through and do the subtraction of the minus one, we get 750 over 0 0.2184. Our last step is to simply divide. 750 divided by 0.2184. This gives us the capital R equals $3,434.07. So if this company goes through, they make quarterly payments of $3,434.07. They make these quarterly payments by the end of two years because of the interest. They will have $30,000 tucked away to buy these computer systems. Once again, thank you for tuning in to The Math Guy. Remember to check back again for more videos by me.